Welcome to educator.com. We discuss today the electric field produced by a continuous charge distribution. First, let us see what is the general expression for E for the electric field. Now, what we know so far is that if I have a point charge Q, then we know the field produced by Q. At any point, at the distance R, the electric field, we know that it's radial, it's along the radius. If Q is positive, it's radially out. If Q is negative, it'll be radially in. And the magnitude of the electric field is K, you can, sometimes people write Ke, just to make it clear that this is connected with electricity. It's K, Q, over R squared. Now K is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. So it's 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 Q over R squared. This is the magnitude of the electric field. If I want to write the electric field as a vector, then I write it as k e q over r square, or just k. Okay, as long as it's clear to you that this k is simply one over four pi epsilon zero. Its value is about nine times ten to the power nine in SI units. This is the magnitude of E, and then, of course, this is a vector, so I must indicate the direction of E. Now, E is along the radius, so I put R hat. Now, if Q is positive, then this quantity is positive, and R hat is a unit vector in the direction of the radius. Here's r hat. So r hat, you draw a vector radially out with magnitude 1. This is called r hat. That's a unit vector in the radial direction. Now, so if q is positive, this quantity here is positive times r hat. So this gives me a vector with a magnitude equal to this much. And its direction is radially out. If q is negative, then the quantity here is negative. So I get e, a negative quantity, times r hat. So this means that E now is radially inward. That is, its direction is opposite to r hat because it's, it's a negative times r hat. So if Q is negative, the electric field will be radially inward. That is, opposite to r hat. So this expression is OK. It gives us both the magnitude of E and its direction. This is for a point charge. This is what we know so far. Now, I have a continuous charge distribution. Now, if I also have a collection of point charges, that's easy. I just calculate the electric field for each point charge and just add up the electric fields as vectors, because they are vectors. Now, what happens? If I have a continuous charge distribution, now it could be continuous in one dimension. For example, I could have a, a line of charge. I could have a, a, a rod, for example, a thin rod, and I spray it with charge. So here I have a continuous charge distribution. Everywhere along the rod, I have charges. 
but it's one dimensional. It could be two dimensional. For example, I could take a square or I could take a disk and spray it with charge. And same thing here. Here I have also continuous charge distribution. It's two dimensional. Or I could have three dimensional charge distribution. I could have a volume and just fill the volume with charges so that there are charges all over spread throughout the volume. For example, you could just take a, a room and fill it with charges. Then now charges are distributed throughout the room. So that's a, that's a, a volume of charge now. So if we have a continuous charge distribution, how do we get the electric field for that? 